Having just blocked in all of the primary detail on the wings area, we can go ahead and finish blocking in the major details around the tail and the or the back area. And so what I first want to go ahead and do is focus on some of the details here in the back. You'll notice that in the previous video we started it with uh, these two portions here. But I want to go ahead and continue this. You'll notice that these two pieces continue on through here. Then we have this piece in here. And also if we look at this from the top view, we can see how some of the details constructed where let me actually leave edit mode by hitting tab and I'll just go over to layer two so we can see this a little more clearly. And in fact, let me just also go and hit shift space to maximize my viewport and also hit in to bring up my uh, my properties panel. And just on the, the background images, I'm just going to increase the opacity for the time being just so I can show you the details a little more clearly. So these are the pieces here that we added in in the previous section. You notice that we still will need to add in these kind of blockish parts and then we've got these kind of exhaust vents right in here. But one of the main details that I want to add in this section is this central shaft going all the way down uh, and then we've got these pieces in here so we may need to go ahead and look at the ones we just added and see what we need to do with those. And then we also have the tail fin details like this. So we're not going to be doing a whole lot in this video as far as the small details are concerned since we're still focusing just on the the major forms. But let's do go or the major details, I should say. But let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. So first, let's check the placement of these. So I'm just going to select them by hitting L while hovering my mouse over any of the vertices associated with them. Let's hit seven to go in a top view. And we can see that they're roughly lined up. And for this this case, they're actually going to be, they're probably lined up close enough, but maybe we could go ahead and uh, do a little bit more shaping. So I'm just going to hit G and X, bring them over along the X axis, and then rotate these just a bit to shape the, or to fit the, the concept a little more accurately. Then let's go ahead and take these sections here by Alt right clicking on them and Alt Shift right clicking on them. And let's just bring them in along the X axis a little bit. And then maybe we'll need to go ahead and hit S and X to scale them in a little bit since you'll notice that if we just bring them in, we're getting too close to the center and we'll eventually just lock those into the center line. Okay, that looks pretty good there. Let's go ahead and even up these ones. You'll notice that these over here are uh, wider than the rest. So what I'm going to do is select these um, here and we'll just hit G, X, hold down control, snap to there. Then let's just go ahead and grab this top vertex that we can see right here, and we want to snap it next to its, I guess you could almost say partner vertex, but just so that we have a nice solid line right there. And then we'll do that with each one of these as well, just to ensure that we have a good straight line. Okay, that looks pretty good. So leaving that like it is, let's go ahead and select the tail fin, and I'll go in here, let's go into top view, and I want to bring these vertices in as well, along with these ones, so I'll just hit B, Use my left click and drag to then drag a box around them to select it. Bring these over along the x-axis. And we don't need to make it exact, just fairly close. Something like that so that we can see uh, these pieces right here coming out just fine. And then I want to go ahead and let's first just add in that central shaft that we see going down the middle. So you'll see, notice that my vertex or my 3D cursor is currently centered at the origin. So what I want to do is just from the side view, which again is three on your number pad, let's just left click right about in here, uh, again from the side view, such that when we go into front view, our cursor is still centered along uh, with the X axis on the Y axis, or X and Z, and then we can just hit Shift A, Mesh, and Circle. Let's immediately hit F6, let's change the vertex count down to 12, the radius to say 0.25, and that ought to work just fine. Then we'll hit tab to leave, or just move our mouse over to remove the panel. We can hit tab to go into edit mode. And the first thing that I want to do is just go and hit R, X, and 90 degrees on my number pad just to rotate that around. Let's go ahead and switch into top view now. And we can start by scaling this down a little bit more to fit. And we can see that it needs to be positioned right about in here. And then what I want to do is now that this is about the right size, let's just extrude this out all the way by hitting E and then Y for locking to the Y axis all the way to the tail fin there. And the reason I want to extrude it all the way first is now I can just select the whole thing. I can hit period to rotate around the cursor 
and then I can just rotate this down to fit approximately so that this is going to basically be the central shaft right in there. And so what I want to do now with this is let's select this mesh. So again, from object mode, and we can just start pulling down these sections a little bit along the Z axis until we can see that central shaft a little better. There we go. So because you know, this should be, uh, if we look at it from the top view, we can see how it's kind of rising above everything else. And the way that we could even make this a little better is first off, let's go ahead and separate out the the tail fin, which actually it is already separated. If we just hit L while selecting over it, we can see that. And let's just deselect this portion of the tail fin by hitting B and then middle click and dragging. And then let's just scale this up. Oops, first I need to hit comma to rotate around the individual center, or you can change it down here, or the bounding box center actually. And then scale it up just a little bit. And then let's hit B and middle click and drag across these, and we'll pull these back up a little bit more there as well. And in fact, we can maybe pull this up a little bit more along the tail, something like that. Okay, and let's actually go ahead and now select all the tail fin pieces. And I'm just going to hit P and separate by selection so that we can focus just on this one section. And in fact, um, let's actually go ahead selecting this one. Let's hit tab to go into edit mode. I want to select this object, this object, and then hit P and separate by selection, because then I can go ahead and select these and this and just hit control J. And I'm just joining these because I want to focus more on these than the middle section. And since this is primarily a part of the tail area, that will allow me to isolate things a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and select all three of these objects and then just hit shift H to hide everything else so that I can focus just on these. We can go ahead and hit in to hide our properties panel since we don't really need it right now. And what I want to do is start shaping some of this area. I can kind of see that we've got this almost flat kind of geometric area right in here. So let's go ahead and try and form that. So in edit mode, I'm just going to grab th these vertices. You notice I'm in wireframe mode, so I select both of these. And we'll just pull this back here. Then let's go ahead and take this to right there. Then I'm going to go ahead and take this vertex. Actually, let's select all four of these. And let's just hit Y and split it apart. So now it's a separate mesh. And then I can just hit S to scale it up a little bit. Maybe I'll hit Alt S, which will scale along the normals to just basically expand it. Because then I want to go ahead and let's take this edge. Let's rotate it around. Take it up like this so we're kind of following this line. We'll bring these up here where they're merging uh, with the tail fin. And then let's go and add in, or actually let's just grab this vertex here. And let's just pull it in along the x-axis about like that. Let's go ahead and view this from the top view, see how it's looking. We can see maybe it's a little wide right now. So let's just bring this all the way in somewhere about like that. And that maybe looks pretty good. Then I can go ahead and select this mesh. I'm going to deselect these two vertices. And I want to hit E to extrude, pull this in along the x-axis just a little bit. And then we'll pull it in along the z-axis some more. So we're basically just adding some thickness to the mesh. And maybe I'll actually take these ones down along the z-axis just a bit. There we go. So we can kind of see how that's starting to work. Just adding in that extra level of thickness. Then if we look at this piece, we can kind of see that this almost looks like... Um, let me switch to layer 2 here so we can... Or we'll just actually just hide our mesh. Let's hit in and increase the opacity. Um, let's see, this is going to be our side view, so we'll increase this so we can kind of see it. It looks like we almost have this middle section coming through. And so let's Alt-H, let's select these. We'll hit Shift-H to hide everything else. And then what I want to do is let's remove this center, center section here. So we'll just hit, excuse me, X and delete vertices. We can go ahead and extrude this vertex up just a little bit. Maybe bring it in along the X-axis a little, and then we can fill in this space by selecting the four vertices. And then I want to select this edge and I'm just going to extrude it out. Uh, actually, first let's go ahead and bring it down and then we can extrude it in like this. We're just extruding several times to kind of fit that profile. And so this shape that we're seeing in here is almost like a side panel. And then this right here, we'll deselect these, deselect these, then needs to just rotate around to fit this whole shape. So you can see that I'm bringing it in to fit this edge. I can rotate around the Z axis a little, maybe bring that in a bit more, that in a bit more. 
And this edge is a dark green right now, which is kind of throwing things off. So I'll hit shift space to unmaximize my view, switch over to the material panel and choose the dark gray and click assign. Then I can maximize that again. And what I want to do is let's just, let's separate out this edge here so we can get a little bit more control. So I'm going to select it, just hit V to rip it apart. And then we can just say, bring it up, bring it out along the X axis a little bit. We'll deselect this vertex, pull this in along the Y and we can kind of see where that is. So then we'll bring it in such that it's even with that. Cause then I just want to select this outside edge here and just extrude it up along the Z axis like that. So we've just got this kind of middle section going on. Okay. Um, we've got this panel or this object right in here. So I'm just going to go ahead. Let's just select, say this edge here. We'll hit shift D right click, scale this down, bring it in over here, switch into front view with one hit S X and zero to just flatten it out. Then let's extrude this out along the Y axis with E about like this. We can pull it down a little. We can go ahead and add in two loop cuts by hitting control R scroll up once on our scroll wheel, then left click. And then I can bring this vertex down, maybe bring this one up and then we'll select this again and just hit E and extrude, take it in along the X axis. And that will just add in that piece there. And doing that, we can see that we want to go ahead and bring in this edge here. So let's just bring this in about like that. And in fact, let's just take this, let's pull it in along the X axis to that vertex and to that vertex. And let's do the same thing here. So let's just first select these two pieces. We'll hit H to hide them. And then we've got this vertex. Uh, let me see. Actually, we'll just leave that like it is for the time being. I can pull this up. What I want to do is let's add in another loop cut right here. So just control R, bring this down. And then I just want to bring this out along the X axis something like that. So basically what I'm doing is I formed this kind of area right in here that is almost like a shelf that then will kind of hold all the details. And then you can see on this one, I need to bring this in along the X axis, maybe to there. And maybe we'll bring this whole thing in just a little bit more about like that. Okay. This needs to be placed behind this. So let's bring this in along the X axis about to there. This ought to be rotated completely flat or actually not flat, but to fit this, this angle here. So we can bring this in and rotate it some more, bring it in. And that's pretty close right in there. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to select this. I'm going to actually redo this little portion that I did. Uh, and instead I'm going to do it from here. And so let's just take this and I'm going to extrude it down just a little bit, bring it in along the X axis a little bit, extrude it all the way into the center about there. And then I can select these three vertices by shift right clicking on them. And actually we'll take this one too. Let's extrude it out to there, to this vertex over here, which will automatically move it, move it in along the X axis as well, such we can select everything, hit W and remove doubles. We remove the one vertex right in here. So then we just need to select these three pull them up along the Z axis until they fit a little better. We could also go ahead and pull these along the Y axis to fit right there. And that one right there, just to make it a little bit more accurate still. Okay. Maybe I'll go ahead and add in, uh, let's see. Looking at this, let's, Let's go ahead and extrude these. So I'm going to extrude these one more time about like that. Let's switch into top view, see where they're going, move it in along the X axis to about right there. You'll notice some differences in the two views where this piece is here on the top view, but over here it's right next to that. And so we need to be aware of that. Um, so what I want to do, I'm going to select this, this edge loop by alt shift, right, alt, just alt right clicking on it. I'm going to hit shift D move it over here. Let's just rotate this a little bit. And now I'm going to kind of freeform this since the references don't quite match. I'm going to scale this up a bit. Then from the top view, I'm going to, or front view, I'm going to rotate this around like this, maybe bring it out. 
and maybe I'll kind of rotate this around just a little bit more so that my my edges match up a bit more. Let's go and hit E to extrude, scale this in so I have some solid faces. Then let's go ahead and select this, and I'm just going to then extrude this. Actually, let's extrude this one more time, and then select W, merge at center, because now I should be able to extrude along the normal, although I can't. All right, let's... Ah, there we go. So what I needed to do is, if we undo this, we should see underneath our display, or mesh display, if we enable the face normals, you can see that our normals are going in all different directions. So if we just hit Control N, they're now pointing all the same way. And so now I can just extrude this along the normals like that, making that process a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is select this. Let's just rotate this um, something like this. If we switch to top view, this looks pretty good. Okay, there we go. Then let's just select this whole area. I'm going to hit E to extrude, right click, scale in a bit, and then let's extrude again, scale up, something about like that. Let's take, let's take this, we'll add in another loop cut right about there, and let's select all these loops, and we're going to hit E to extrude, right click, and then S to scale up. Or actually, we need to undo that. Instead, let's just hit X, delete vertices. Let's take this, and... Yeah, we'll just go ahead and take this down something. Actually, let's undo that a few times. Uh, instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this. Let's add another loop cut. Scale this up. Scale up something like this. We'll take this edge. And let's just scale up until that matches approximately. Then we'll select all these edges. And I'm going to extrude one more time something like that. So that's basically forming a large exhaust piece. I can move this up and around the axes a little bit more to better fit such that these tubes are going directly into that. And that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll go ahead and extrude this one more time, something like there, and then I can just scale it down to fit. And then what I'll go ahead and do is... See, that looks pretty good. Um... Let's first go ahead and add in another loop cut here, to which then we will scale, or actually let's do it on the other side. So we'll add a loop cut to here, all, all the way to the edge, so then we can just scale this up, adding in a edge there. We'll do the same thing over here, scale it up approximately the same, same width. There we go. Then I want on this edge here, I want to go ahead and add in some loops to bring this around. So let's just hit Control R, we'll say add in uh, four loops ought to do it, because then I can just say, go ahead and select these. I'm going to pull this down along the z-axis, about like that. Uh, and then let's go ahead and take this one, let's pull it down. And what I want to do is just create a smooth shape right in here, so that I get a nice smooth angle, rather than it kind of changes in shape. So there we go, so now this is nice and smooth, as you can see there. That works nicely. I could go ahead and select this edge, bring this back along the y-axis a bit, maybe out along the x. And let's just hide this for a second so we can kind of see everything. That's looking pretty good. We can Alt-H to unhide everything. Let's select the tail fin now. And what I want to do is go ahead and do some more shaping in here. I'm going to take this top vertex, we're going to move it in about like that along the y-axis so that we're getting a nice angle in here. We'll do the same thing with the bottom vertices. We can select everything, let's scale it up a little bit, and then we'll hit E to extrude, scale it in so that we have some depth on this. And then what I want to do is go in here, let's select all of these areas along with that one, and we're just going to hit G and Z pull them down just a bit along the z-axis so it kind of fits the concept a little bit better. And then we'll also go in here, let's select this shaft, and I want to, let's just scale each of these down a little bit. So I'm going to select this whole thing, and then I'll hit S, and then Shift Y to the just scale it down, about like that. Basically I'm scaling down to the size of the shaft right in here. 
and we can maybe go a little bit more somewhere in there. Oh, and actually, I guess that actually was adding some bad distortion to it. So instead, let's just go ahead and if we hit Control N first and then hit Alt S, then we can scale that uh, proportionally along the normals, which works nicely. Let's go ahead and fix this right in here. So what I want to do is add in another loop cut through here, which then we will hit S, X, and 0 to flatten it out. Um, and we can, for the time being, let's go ahead and hide these objects so that we can get a better view of this. And what I want to do is basically just take this edge loop here and, and this one, and we're just going to hit E to extrude, take it down, and then selecting just the center one, let's go ahead and take it down even further so that we are basically creating a channel for that to go through. And then we can also just delete that vertex there because we really don't need it. Okay, so now with this one, this kind of drive shaft, what I want to do is, looking at this, um, let's add in some of these basic forms right here. So I'm going to just hit Control R, add in an edge loop, about like that, and then I'm going to take that edge loop, I'm going to hit Shift D, right click, S to scale, and then E to extrude, scale up again, take everything, then I'm going to select the whole thing, hit E to extrude, take out its width, and basically I just created a ring perfectly around that, which then on the original edge loop, I can just select it, hit X, and delete edge loop. So it's just a very easy way to create something that's automatically scaled correctly with this, although I didn't, I f forgot that I only extruded along the Y axis, so I'll just quickly reshape that just a little bit and then kind of looking at this I can see we've got these areas here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these edges or vertices about like this and then I'm going to hit uh, I want to snap them up to to here but I'm going to hit G and then shift X so I don't do this X axis snap them up so they're perfectly in line and there we are then I can maybe go ahead and do the same thing with these ones G shift X snap to there Maybe I'll scale them out along the x-axis just a little bit. And actually, maybe let's go ahead and take these ones up just a little bit. We'll hit G, Shift X, snap up to, well, let's try, yeah, that one will be good. And then we can hit S, X, bring them in a little, take these ones, take them out just a bit more. And then I want to go ahead and select each of these edges. So I basically just X selected the sides of them. I'm going to hit E to extrude, right click, S, X, bring them out, something like that, just so that when I added the subsurf modifier, everything will scale correctly. And I can also go ahead and select these. I'm going to hit E to extrude, right click, S, and, or actually let's just hit Alt S, or Control N first, then Alt S, that will scale those in perfectly in the direction they are going without changing the thickness at all. Because then I can select, say, these two loops, and if I switch into face mode by control tab, then I can go in and select these. By clicking on the edge, I'll alt shift right click, and then I can hit E to extrude, right click, and control in once more. And then I should be able to do alt S, although I'm going to have to, let's see, if I deselect, well, I'll first do alt S in one direction. like that, and then I can, well, I guess that doesn't actually work. Uh, let's do, let's just do one side at a time. We will first do this side, we'll just eat extrude, take it out a little bit like that, and then we'll do this one, extrude out a little bit like that. There we go. Let's go ahead and select this whole piece, and I'm going to hit Let's first, um, I'm going to change my manipulator over to normal. Then I'm going to select this whole ring of faces, hit control space to turn on the manipulator. And you notice that the normal is going in the correct direction. So now let's go and hit in, scroll down to our transform orientations. Let's create a new one based on that. And then we can use that face point zero zero to select this whole thing. So we're using this and let's hit shift D and then double tap Z and we can just move right along that. And if we switch into top view, we can see that, hey, this next piece will be right about in there. 
Uh, and then we'll just go ahead and use three of them. So maybe right about in there and then shift D double tap Z move it in again. And that one is maybe going a little too far. You know, we don't have to follow the concept exactly. But something about like that will give us a good starting point. Let's go ahead and go into this piece again. And I'm going to hit control tab, go into vertex mode. Let's select this edge loop. I'm going to hit, let's go ahead and select all these, hit shift H so we can hide the tail. And then let's just control E and edge slide this down. Let's go and add in another edge loop all the way up and then we'll pull it out along the x-axis such that then we can go ahead and add in another edge loop there to then select these and hit E to extrude and take that up something like that. So again we're just kind of creating an extra groove along that for these to then extrude around and if we wanted to maybe improve that a little further we could say grab these faces and we could extrude them out along the x-axis. But we'll wait on that for the time being until we get a little further along and kind of see where we're at with things. Okay, let's go ahead and go back to vertex mode. Let's select this vertex. We'll just hit G, X, snap out to there. We'll do the same thing with this one. If we hit Alt H, we can see everything and see that it's really starting to come together. Let's go and select this piece and from the top view, if we switch over to another layer, we can kind of see what I want to create. So we want this shape right in here. And so on layer one, let's just go in here and I'm going to go ahead and select all these vertices. Let's just hit X, delete the vertices. And then from the top view, um, I want to go ahead and add in another edge loop right through here, I think. Yes, and then we'll select, say, these edge loops, and we're going to go ahead and let's move them over in some of these places. We'll, uh, well, let's see, let's grab these two vertices and these two. We'll hit G, X, pull them over a bit. Let's go ahead and grab these ones here. We'll pull them over. Basically, I'm fitting, fitting them to this green portion in here. And that ought to be good. Let's select this loop and this loop. And I'm going to go ahead from this point on, or actually this point on. Let's go ahead and hit uh, Shift D, right click, and then we'll take this down along the Z axis, a little bit along the Y axis. Then let's go ahead and extrude out along the Z axis. Then we can hit Control L. And we're going to assign our green material to this, something like that. We can go ahead and deselect these ones here. We'll pull this in along the y-axis so it's intersecting there. Let's go ahead and take this, and I'll take these vertices. And these ones, we'll pull them in along the x-axis to fit this shape in here. Let's go ahead and take these four, move them in, something like that. Then we can take this edge, we'll extrude it into the to the center, so we've got that shape in there. And then we can go ahead, let's select this edge, and I want to, or and this one, and we'll delete that face so that this can extrude correctly. We'll take this, and let's just go ahead and extrude this all the way to there. We'll move it in along the x-axis a little bit. From the side view, we can see that this should ought to be somewhere up in there. Let's go ahead and select this edge, hit X, delete edges, so that it removes that interior one that it created there. Go ahead and select these four, fill that face. And again, we just fill a face with F. And then what I want to do is add in, say, two, two edge loops here. We can scale them out along the x-axis a little bit. And then maybe we'll go ahead and pull this out a bit more. And let's just extrude our, let's see. Yeah, we'll just extrude that out, and then we can kind of scale it down a bit in there.
This is maybe too far out. Something about like that. Let's go ahead and fill in these faces. And then let's go ahead and let's see, we need to fill in this whole area now. And so this can be done. We've got these shapes in here. Let's go ahead and go in here. Let's select this shape that we've got going on. Delete that edge so that this is a continuous edge loop through there. Let's go ahead and extrude this all the way up to about there. And then we can kind of scale it up a bit somewhere in there. And that will just kind of help fill in our areas. Uh, and we're actually going to want to merge these together. So let's select this edge loop and this edge loop. We'll just go and delete those. Then we can select these bottom ones down here that we just... Oh, I guess this is on another mesh. So we'll select these. We can pull them down a bit. We'll take these, pull them down to there. Or maybe about to there. Let's go and add in another edge loop to the, about there such that we can you know manipulate these shapes a little bit and what I want to do is let's go ahead and join these together so we'll hit control J and then I'm going to say take this edge loop deselect these ones let's pull this back just a bit like that I'm going to grab this vertex move this over and you can see we've kind of got a line in here so I'm gonna go ahead and make that basically the line of a big say engine block and so let's just go ahead and select say this face we'll hit uh, shift D move it in or out a little bit along the x-axis let's go ahead and select these vertices hit X and delete let's select this switch into side view and I just want to follow this shape so with this face selected, let's bring these over here along the x or y axis, grab these, extrude it down about to there, grab that. Snap those out along the x axis where they should be. Let's go and select this whole thing and we're going to hit E to extrude, take it in along the x-axis there. And let's go ahead and just delete these inside vertices. Hit X and delete vertices. Except actually I don't want to delete that bottom one, just those top two. Because then I'm going to go ahead and merge these together. So I'm going to select them, hit W, merge at last. And we'll select this one, W, merge at last. And finally if we go down here, we can see that maybe we need to add in another edge loop. But let's wait just a moment on that until we kind of see where we're at. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to bring these down a little bit. Let's go ahead and hit Alt H so we can kind of see where these are. So this really needs to say come in to about there and I'll select all this just flattening these out Let's just take this in along the x-axis, somewhere like that. Let's go ahead and deselect this inside edge. We'll hit SX and zero, flatten all those. This could really come in a bit, maybe scale along the x-axis. Yes, this whole shape along with these and this could come in a bit. 
So basically we're coming into the edge of the paneling right in there. This could probably come in just a little bit. Maybe deselect this portion. Okay, I want to go ahead and connect these here. And so what we need to do is let's add in an edge loop down like that, which then we can fill in those faces. And those faces, we can make these our, oops, our dark green, or dark gray, I mean. So we'll assign those. And then we can see we've got some issues with these. Let's pull them in along the x-axis to about there. And I want to go ahead, let's delete this face. And then let's just go ahead and extrude a vertex from here out to there. We'll merge these. Let's bring in this inner edge to there. We'll fill this, and then we're going to go ahead and snap this vertex to there, this vertex to here, this one to there. Select everything, W, and remove doubles. We can go ahead and fill in this face right here, which these vertices then need to... Well, actually, that's okay if that's not quite rounded. Let's go ahead and just select just this area now that is connected and hit Shift H so we can kind of fill this all in. Let's go ahead and select this vertex, delete that. Um, basically what I want to do now is just kind of complete these sections. I'm going to pull that out to there so it matches up. Actually, we'll pull it out to there. Let's take this. And what we're basically going to do now, like I realized that this was focused a little bit more on the tail section, but we just want to go ahead and pull all these in together and make them fit. Uh, it's definitely an important stage in the process. And so let's add in, say, two edge loops there. We'll take this one, scale to zero along the Z, then you go ahead and snap, excluding the Y axis to that, so it's taken it out there. And then we can go ahead and fill this edge. Maybe we can pull that in along the Y axis. We'll snap that along the x-axis to, to right about there. Or actually, I guess we ought to go ahead and bring these out a bit. Add in another edge loop. Fill that. And then we can kind of see where this is going in here. So we'll pull this in. We'll fill that. And then we can fill in that shape quite nicely there. See, that's going to connect nicely right there, so we'll fill that. Let's go ahead and I'm going to de... or let's see, let's go ahead and... Let's take... Let's take these edges here and extrude them out to right there, select everything, W, remove doubles. Then let's go ahead and I wanna select, say these areas right in here, or this is our flat point. So let's go ahead and select this, snap up to there. And then I'm going to, uh, let's just take these or extrude out to right there. Grab that vertex, bring it in, bring this all the way in along the X axis. And then we can hit G or E to extrude, Z, snap up to here. Then we can fill in that face. Again, assign the dark gray. That'll work nicely. So that kind of fills in that area. We could go ahead and add in another edge loop all the way up to there, which then we can fill in here and alt right click to select that, fill that. We can go ahead and do the same thing right there. It's not an ideal face loop, but it ought to work pretty well. You notice that now if we go into face mode, select that loop, it actually goes through there. So that actually works pretty nicely. 
to kind of round things off because it also gives us an option to add in or different ways to add in our edge loops. So that works pretty well. We might change that a little bit down the road, but for the time being, we can leave that as is. Let's see if we move this. Yeah, let's go ahead and move this back a bit so that we have that edge there. Okay, that works well. Um, then let's see, we've got this area in here that is a bit awkwardly shaped. And so what I'm going to do is if we select this, hit tab go in edit mode, alt H to unhide everything. Let's basically make this kind of a airfoil of sorts. And so I want to select this whole bottom part up in here, through here, and these there. Then let's go ahead and hit E to extrude. Right click so we cancel it, then take this down along the Z axis, kind of rotate this around, and then bring it in there. And so that's kind of an airfoil for this whole section. And then let's go ahead and select this piece. Let's take this, and we should still have that manipulator on, so we can just pull this in, rest the way there. There we are, so that goes all the way. Let's go ahead and take this. We're going to add in one more piece, so we'll just then double, double tap or log to the Z axis by tapping Z twice, so it's the normal. And maybe we won't go quite that far, about like that. Then you can see that maybe we want to go ahead and bring these vertices here for this sidewall, bring it down a little bit along the Z axis so that it matches that a bit better. Okay, so now we, you know, you can start to see things really sort of coming together. Um, I would like to, let's fill in, let's go ahead and shift H on this, select that. Let's add in, um, let's see, how do we want to do this? I want to go ahead and fill in this area. So let's, wait, let's Alt H first to kind of see what that is. Actually, okay, that one's fine in there, but I do want to fill in this hole. And so if we look at this, we can kind of see where that's coming down to. So let's go ahead and take this vertex. Let's hit V to rip that apart. And then we're going to add in another edge loop right about there. We can pull this out a little bit along the X axis. And then let's grab that single vertex and let's just snap it down to there. Select everything, W, remove doubles. We'll take these two vertices, hit G, X, snap, or first scale to zero along the X axis, then snap to there. Same thing with these. Just to make sure that those are nice and flat. There we go. So these are then kind of coming in to form a flat area right through there. We ought to do the same thing with these ones. Except these top two ought to come up to there. And actually, these could go ahead and round out something like that, since we have this form kind of coming through in there. Maybe we'll bring that one out a bit more, round off that angle. Then I can go ahead and I'll select these, fill in a face right there, maybe take this up along the z-axis a bit, and there. Uh, then what I'll do to fill in this area is... Uh, let's see, I'm going to just add in a face right, now right, let's actually do this, let's take this vertex, we're going to hit V to rip it apart, take it up along the Z axis, maybe snap it along the Y to right there so it's straight, then we'll fill in that face, let's fill in another face right here, and then we can kind of round this off, so if we add in another edge loop right here, we can then select these two, take them down a little bit, and then we can fill in that very easily to create a nice nice face, but also kind of a rounded edge there. And so that works quite nicely with this area, although we might go ahead and hit Alt-H, select all these. And we can pull them in 
a little bit along the x or z y axis so that it's flowing around that a little nicer. Okay, um, let's just take these edges here and along with these edges or this vertex, let's just go ahead and extrude them in. I'm going to take them along the y axis to right there and let's take them out along the x axis to right there and let's go ahead and fill in a face and then we can actually take these out a bit further so we maintain this kind of ridge right in there and then what I want to do is let's select this again shift H we can add in say two edge loops right there we could go ahead and deselect these scale these a little bit along the z-axis to round that out and that looks pretty good right there let's go ahead and take these um, from here I want to just scale them in along the y-axis a bit, straighten them up. Same thing here. Then we can go ahead and connect them. Need one more edge loop right here. Then we can fill this face. We can fill that face, let's add in one edge loop there, and then we can fill that, fill that, leaving us with one big solid body with a nice edge flow. Uh, some of these areas, maybe right here, we'll take this over, take this over. Same thing here, maybe we can snap right to those to kind of soften these up. Let's take this edge, I'm going to hit Control E, edge slide, bring it over to there, same thing here. Just so I'm keeping these edges you know, there's not too much distortion going on or anything like that. We can take that along, out along the x-axis to soften up this. Maybe we'll go ahead and take this back along the y a little bit. You can see there's some distortion right in there. Bring those in. Maybe I'll go ahead and just hit W and smooth on these to smooth them out a bit. Let's go ahead and hit Alt-H, don't hide everything else. Alt-H again in object mode, don't hide all those. And there we go. I think that's most of the the major details. You know, definitely kind of refined a lot of the engine block details and stuff like that. Uh, you can start to see it really taking shape. Oh, one last thing I want to do is go ahead and fill in these. So let's go ahead. I know that this is getting a little bit long, but I would like to do the tail fin areas here. So I'm going to select uh, this loop and this loop. We're going to pull this out along the x-axis. Let's go ahead, rotate around, so we're basically perpendicular to this, or I guess parallel, and then we're going to rotate this a bit, and to there. Let's add in another edge loop right through here, and then I'm going to uh, select this face, hit X, delete the faces. Let's actually just select this, hit X, delete the vertices, and then we'll select this edge and this edge, hit F to fill a face. Same thing with this one here and this one here, and this one here. So that just connects that nicely. If we go into top view, we can see how this ought to be shaped, which is pretty much exactly like that. Uh, let's maybe take this bottom edge. Let's bring it in along the y-axis a little bit to smooth this angle. Uh, let's add in this little bit here. So I'm gonna hit S, X, Y, or S, X, and zero then we'll go and hit E to extrude, take this out along the x-axis there just a little bit and then we can go ahead and actually let's not do that instead let's hit X delete those vertices select this shift S cursor to selected Now I'm going to add in a circle on the circle let's just go and hit F6 we're going to change the vertex count down to 6 radius to 0.01 and hit OK R X and 90 that's maybe way too small though so we'll scale it up reposition right in there bring this over to there hit e to extrude take this over extrude again scale it down extrude again scale down extrude out for the the light and then we can go ahead and we'll just fill this with two faces so we'll select all four hit f select the other four hit f go and take this side extrude it out 
just a couple times to create that rounded cap. And then we'll do the same thing to fill this in. Let's go ahead and grab this edge, pull it in along the Y axis to there. Take this one, pull it out a bit. We can add in another edge loop here to then smooth out that angle. Bring that out a bit, bring that out a bit. Let's maybe take this edge, we'll hit Control E, edge slide, bring it down just a little bit. Let's maybe select this whole thing and we're gonna hit SX, scale it out a bit. And then we'll take this whole thing, move it into place there. Maybe this is a little bit too big. Let's go ahead, deselect that outside loop. Let's add in a new material. We'll click assign, create a new material slot for it, and we're just going to call this light or lights. And this is just going to be basically a bright orange just for the time being. So again, it's just a placeholder, but it'll work quite nicely for that purpose. And there we go. Okay. This looks good. We need to go ahead and take this and we're going to pull it back just a little bit so it's not connected there. Hit E to extrude, rotate, bring it in, scale it up a bit, and then one last time, scale it down a bit. And go ahead and take this right here. Let's scale it down a bit, hit E to extrude, scale it in, and see we maybe need to go ahead bring this in along the x-axis just a little bit, about like that. Then the green portion right in here, or I guess it's right there and there, and then these, this needs to come up, and this needs to come up, so that that is all green. Let's go ahead and take these green portions as well, pull them down, and they actually need to go ahead and we'll rotate them around, bring it way down to here, bring this in, and go ahead and just pull this back then, bring it out along the x-axis a little bit. Go ahead and bring that in a little, smooth that. Looks good, we'll take this, this edge loop, hit E to extrude, scale it in just a little bit. Let's first take it in along the x-axis. We can go ahead and then deselect these, and then we'll hit S, Z, scale them down. And then we can scale them in along the y-axis to refit the angle there that they should be. Take that, maybe we'll bring this one up better fit that. We can add in another edge loop here to then bring that out along the x-axis to better fit. We can go ahead and select this, deselect that part, and then hit Control e edge slide, slide it down. And then let's go ahead and let's just add in a little bit more shape to this, even though it's not on the concept, so it's just kind of wrapping around that a little bit more fitted. There we go. Take that, bring it in a bit more like that. And then we can go ahead and scale this in a bit more. Take that in along the y-axis there. Add in one more loop here. And then scale that out. Let's just hit W and smooth a couple of times to smooth out any angles. Bring that down into there. Okay, and then let's go ahead and also fix this angle just a little bit. So we're getting a little bit more of a straight shape through there that won't cause any kind of awkward pinching. Okay, there we go. So I think that is pretty much all of the blocking we need to do for now until we get to all of the, the really fine detail 
and of course all the tedious work in you know making something in here that's going to look good and that will look realistic enough that it's at least believable that this thing could actually fly. So let's just save our file and we'll stop for now. I encourage you to go ahead and take a good long break and then we'll come back at this fresh to do all the detail work.